There are a ton of extensions out there to help improve your stable diffusion experience, but some of these really should have been installed with the software by default due to how useful they are. So I'll be sharing 10 really useful extensions you should install right now so you can get more out of this brilliant software. Hit the like button, consider supporting over on Patreon, and let me give it to you bite size. Before we begin, I'll quickly show you how to install extensions. All of this information was covered in my extensions tab video where I broke down all of the options under that tab so either check that video out for a full review or stick with this video for a refresher. The first method is through the available tab where you can load up the index and search through the list of extensions you want before hitting install and then pressing apply and restart UI. The second method is through the extensions URL which involves pasting the URL for the extension into the URL box under install from URL and hitting install, then apply and restart UI. Our first extension is called delete button and it has this revolutionary feature never seen before in any piece of software. What this extension does, and you might want to sit down for this, it provides a button that lets you delete generated images from within the user interface. I know, it's an absolutely wild idea, but for some reason, missing from Stable Diffusion. You can hit the red X icon under the generated image and you will get a message stating that the file is gone and where it was located. A detailer, or after detailer, is a method for automatic face, hand and full body detection, which allows you to automatically in-paint these areas for an improved image without having to manually grab the brush and start painting the mask yourself in the in-painting tab. And in-painting is a way of modifying a particular part of your image, for example, wonky eyes or multiple fingers. Now don't be intimidated by the number of tabs and settings within this extension, as you can actually use this right out of the box by enabling it and selecting the corresponding model. I tend to use the YOLO VAN model for faces, hand and person. The settings should work for most use cases, but you may want to ensure your in-paint width and height matches your image so your in-paint isn't a lower resolution than your actual image. You can see the effects of using after detailer in this image and overall we save so much time as we don't have to manually in-paint the different areas. Model Preset Manager is a game changer as this extension allows you to save and load generation data for images similar to how styles operate. But the power is in the user interface, where you have access to a few additional pieces of information. Presets can be saved under checkpoints, so you know that a particular piece of generation data is associated with a particular model. You can see the generation data, modify that data, and rename the preset all within the user interface, as well as accessing the model page and sharing your presets with other people as a JSON file, located under Stable Diffusion Web UI, Extensions, Model Preset Manager, Scripts, Model Presets. If you want to create your own preset, you should navigate to the Model Preset Manager tab and select Retrieve Local Model Information. This will load up the checkpoint within the tab, allowing you to access saved presets under that checkpoint. If you don't have any saved, then you will want to generate an image, and when the image is generated, hit the Send to Model Preset Manager button. This will take the generation data and send it to the Model Preset Manager tab and you will see the generation data next to the presets box. Then the last step is to enter the current preset name and hit Save Preset, which will finish the creation of the preset, which you can load when you're ready. System Info is another feature which should have been standard within Automatic One and what this does is provide you with information regarding stable diffusion and your operating system in one convenient location. You can see the state of stable diffusion, the version you are running, the memory usage, run benchmarks, and even see your installed models to ensure that everything you expect is loading up correctly. Now, 3D Open Pose Editor is a very useful feature, which really should be standard in Automatic One, given how tricky it can be to generate poses for characters through text alone. This extension allows you to pose a stick figure and then generate various types of map to then use in ControlNet as references to copy the pose to your generated character. The tool is impressively simple to use while giving you a wide range of options you would expect to see in any 3D software like 3ds Max or Blender, allowing you to even modify the position of fingers. Aspect Ratio Helper is an extension used to maintain the aspect ratio of an image when modifying its width or height. 
This means you don't have to worry about squashing or stretching your image when scaling it up or down, as it will maintain its overall shape and comes with a variety of presets from 1 to 1 to 16 by 9. You can select the lock icon to lock your current resolution so that it will automatically scale when you change the value, keeping things nice and even. Control Net is a super powerful extension, which I'm sure you've heard of before. But if you haven't, then let me break it down for you. Control Net allows you to take a reference image and generate various kinds of maps from the reference, which can then influence how images are made. For example, you could take an image and generate the pose, or maybe create different kinds of maps like depth and normal. You can pixelize the image or create line variations, and these have different use cases for varied results. Another fantastic extension is Image Browser, which allows you this mind-blowing ability to browse your images within the user interface. But this isn't your typical search bar, as you have extensive filtering tools to sort by date, file name, and even the metadata like EXIF keywords and types of prompts. You can even see generation data, move it to your favorites tab, add a rank to the image so you can filter by rank and access maintenance tools, which have no obvious instructions, but allow you some additional features. To boot up your images, press the blue refresh icon on the extension to load them up. You can even select individual images to assign information to them, such as ranking or to delete them. Remove background is a super useful tool, which does what it says on the tin and removes the background from the subject, which can help you create masks or simply avoid having to use external software like the pen or magic wand tool. This tool has varying degrees of accuracy depending on how complex your background is, but this can be useful for if you're generating something like a logo against a plain white background. Wildcards are super useful for when you're exploring what kind of art you want to design, but you can't decide and need the help of randomization. You can create a list of prompts, words, phrases, and terms within the notepad file, and then select a random prompt from that file by using double underscore, the file name, and then another double underscore in place of where the prompt should be. This can be useful for when you want to randomly generate a particular style, hair color, or anything you like, depending on what you have stored in your wildcard file. But hopefully this video has introduced you to some useful extensions, and if so, please consider liking the video so others can benefit, and of course subscribe. A big thanks to the supporters over on Patreon as well. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.